Hey now, so thank you everyone for the wonderful feedback I got with the Hank Aaron video. I was so excited and so pumped. I went right away the next day. I thought I want to do uh, Grover Cleveland Alexander, better known as Old Pete. Now, Grover Cleveland Alexander finished his career with 373 wins, inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1938. Sorry, elected, inducted the original class in 1939. He is in like, the upper right corner that famous photo that you've seen probably a million times over. Uh, even though he's number three all time with wins, tied with Christy Matthewson at 373, you can make an argument that he's very underrated. And I was actually talked to Mike about this baseball collector. So, Mike, if you're watching, maybe you'll comment. And Mike brought up a great point of why he thinks that is these players in this generation. And that is because they were in the generation between. They did have a T206 card, and they never had a Bowman or Topps card. So collecting-wise from baseball cards, there's cards out there of him, like the Cracker Jack and stuff like that. But really, there aren't that many cards out there of him that are that collectible, it seems, because they're in between the T206 and the Topps generation. And I thought that was an excellent point. Uh, I never collected baseball cards back then. But uh, my kudos for pointing that out. I was really impressed by that. So anyways, let's talk about Pete Alexander and the autograph. So Pete was, as everyone can point out, he was a great signer. Unfortunately, in uh, 1918, while he was having some of his best years, he got shipped off to the French line. And he came back with what they call shell shock from World War I. It's probably better known now as PTSD. Uh, and so he was just never the same pitcher. He... They say he got ringing in the ears. He started having seizures. And because of that, he became an alcoholic. So even though he was inducted in 1939, he's considered one of the tougher original inductees of the 1939 in that photo because he passed away in 1950. And from the time he retired to the time he passed away, he was very reclusive. He didn't make many appearances. He moved constantly. So even though the government postcard had picked up steam by then, it was very tough tracking him down. So government postcards are considered rare. So if you're looking to pick up a uh, Cleveland Alexander autograph today, expect to pay, I would say, easily $1,500 to $2,000 for a nice example. When I say nice example, I'm not talking cuts. Uh, as I always say, I try to avoid cuts at almost all – Whenever possible, I can avoid a cut. So I'm going to show you real quickly. I want to show you the autograph I have in my collection. So let me sw switch screens here. Pull this up. So here we have a Grover Cleveland Alexander. This is a 1929 government postcard. Uh, this is the one I own. To be honest, I paid about $900 for this in 2014. Uh, and so a couple of things I want to post with uh, show with mine. Now, this is from uh, Nate Mandel. Or Nat Mandel. He was one of the Nathan, maybe. He was one of the original like government postcard collectors to get autographs through the mail. And so uh, this is a real nice example, except for the G here. This is rated an 8.5, and I'm pretty sure it's on the G alone. As you can see here, the, there's some paper loss here. Uh, but when you're buying a Grover Cleveland Alexander, it's like the later in life, usually the more the G, you know, we'll look at this in a second. The G sort of went to the left when it swooped up. But when you're buying him, you want to see that. You want to see the C nice elongated. And the autograph sort of goes downward. So you definitely want to look for breaks after the X and after the N. And any good Alexander autograph that I've seen, again, you want to see these breaks. Uh, you really don't want to see that G crossing, except, except for, sorry, especially after he retired. Again, the G got more out, not got more in. During his playing career, he was pretty good about getting the cross in the G right there. So, again, you look here, you see the break at the X, and the N usually looks more like almost like a lowercase r. I don't know if you can see that, almost like a straight point. So that's what you want to look for. So I want to jump to the PSA database here. So we're going here. So we're going to come back to this one in a second. But you can see here, there. this is signed in 1950, the year he passed away. Again, a beautiful example. You can see the G now. The opening of the G is way out to the left where the uh, rest of it is. Again, you're going to see Grover C. Alexander. You're going to see G.C. Alexander. You're going to see full Grover Cleveland Alexander. He was pretty chaotic or erratic, I should say, in the way he signed. The one thing you don't want to see is 
like real choppy autograph. He since he died at a relatively young age of 63, his autograph was very smooth throughout his life, as you can see here. Look at that A. Like you don't see any choppiness whatsoever. He wrote very quickly. It was not erratic at all, this signature. So this is, again, a later in life signature. You see how the N looks like so like the flat R, almost like a V right here where it crosses. Uh, let's look at some more examples on the PSA database here. Again, 1939, post uh, career, the G is out right there. Nice break at the X. The R, it looks like at the N looks like an R almost. You can see the break right there. Uh, here's another example. Again, you could see the break there. You could see the break there. Again, the G is going out. It's not really crossing this little the indentation right here. Again, these are all on the uh, PSA database. I think they're all good on the PSA database. They're all pretty similar here. This looks like an autograph he signed during his playing career. Again, you could see right here, breaking the X, breaking the A. It looks like almost like a V right here in the Alexander. So I went to Ryan's. Oh, let's talk about the postcard right here. Plaque postcard for you uh, collectors of player postcards. Hall of Fame postcards. This postcard right here last sold for, get this, $80,000. It was the most ever paid for a Hall of Fame plaque postcard more than Babe Ruth, even though Babe Ruth died before Pete Alexander. And the reason it is, is like I said, he was so hard to find and nail down with these postcards and people just weren't mailing them at the time. So I think there are two that exist that have been certified as authentic, this one and another one. And I mean, the collectors out there have no money. And so there's a very high desire. Like I said, there's only two known. So by far the rarest of any of the signed postcards in existence is Grover Cleveland Alexander. So again, the last one sold maybe a year or two ago for $80,000. Blows my mind. So anyways, let's go through the rest of the PSA. And I want to talk about forgeries with him in a second. Again, as you can see here, very consistent. The open G, this again through the X here. It's tough to see here, but there is a break between the N and the D. Uh, 1933 example. Even then, again, post career, you see the open and the G. Sorry. So let's get back to this one again. Nice 1936 government postcard. Break in the X. Break right there. Uh, the G is a little odd, but again, it's still good. It's a beautiful example right here. So if I were buying a Grover Cleveland Alexander autograph, there is no question I would be looking for government postcards or documents or even certified cuts. Now, the, really the thing you need to be aware of is two things. This is according to Ron K, not to me. And I'm going to pull this up here. This is Heritage Completed Auction Sites. And, Her and so the Ron K's book says, listen, Single sign baseballs like Grover Cleveland and Alexander pretty much don't exist. He's only seen one. If you want to go over a Grover Cleveland and Alexander baseball, you need to buy a team sign baseball. In addition, he said, look out for there's certain centennial postcards he is deemed as fake that have passed TPAs. Now, I'm not here to judge that TPA is right or wrong, but I think I know where Ron's coming from. So I want to show a couple examples here if I can. Uh, oh, something else interesting is that uh, Ronald Reagan played Grover Cleveland Alexander in a movie in 1963, maybe, and that increased his. Uh... So, okay, let's look right here. Uh... So, again, this is a ball, uh, ball sold for an heritage for $31,000, single sign. And again, it's so rare here. Now, if you look it up and we go into detail. This may be the one. Actually, this one looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Maybe this is the one. He said he's seen one or two that are good, and this may be it. This is pretty clean right here. You can see the the G's opened up almost here. And, again, the nice C, the break. Really don't see a break there, sort of. I would have my concerns. This one looks pretty good, but there's some worse ones here I want to go over. Let's keep going down here. Again, here's a postcard signed by Alexander. This one sold for oh fifty seven thousand dollars. Maybe this is the other one. Again, they're so rare. Expect spend a lot of money on these. So let's go right here. Let's go to this baseball right here. So this one sold in last year for twenty one thousand. And I'm not saying it's fake, but I want to explain where I think people get reserved. Maybe it's not good because you can see right here. According to this, was signed in nineteen thirty three, and clearly the G. The beginning of the G goes through 
the letter. And that's rare. Now, I'm not saying it's fake. I'm not saying it's not. But it causes concerns to people that really study his autograph. Let's go over some more here. Again, you look at these right here. You can see where, again, the G's going, sorry, the beginning of the G's going through the autograph. That is concerning. And again, it's such so rare to find a uh, sweet spot Grover Cleveland Alexander. Who was asking for that back then? Uh, again, see how, let's, go, let's bring this in further here. And again, Ron has his concerns. This G looks odd to me. You can see how a G is going through beginning the G goes through it. It's just, it looks odd. Yeah, there's a space after the X. There's a space after the N. It's, again, these forgers are so good. I'm not saying this is forged. I really don't know. But again, it's just causes concern. So again, when you're buying baseballs, be so careful. So I want to show one other example I saw in here that Ron questions. Again, I don't want to say if it is or is not truly an autograph, but it was the baseball centennial uh, government postcard. And I know I saw it in here, and I can see where Ron's concern came from. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. Of course, now I don't see it. So I appreciate everyone who's sticking with me because I really want to point this out, this government postcard. It was sold through Heritage. And again, Ron, I think, had his concerns over this specific flat signature. And again, usually you don't see a forged Alexander signature on a flat. The authentication companies are really good, usually, in finding these. Oh, here it is, right here. So this sold in 2014. Now, if you look at this, let's blow it up here. Ron calls out these centennial postcards. And I think the reason why he calls out is if you look right here at the A, the A is not smooth. It's really choppy. So if we go back here, even in 1950, a couple of months before he died, he was still signing a really smooth signature. And this was signed obviously through the mail. It was a government postcard. But look how choppy that A is. So, I mean, Ron's calling this out, I think think this very postcard to say, listen, just if you're going to spend $2,000, buy a nice one. Like, just be careful. And like rule of thumb is just be careful. Buy the autograph. Don't buy the certification. I'm not saying it's not real. Who am I to judge in that matter? But just like look out. You see how that A is real slowly drawn. It's real wobbly right here where the A is. Where again, you want to see a nice smooth A like this. So if I were spending... $2,500 on a Grover Cleveland Alexander. I'd be buying, sorry, I'd be buying this nice big autograph and not this one where it's like really crunched in and just it's not as smooth as you'd like to see. So again, PSA has his autograph rated at about an eight out of 10. Again, there's some autographs where PSA says, forget it, you're never going to find like the Frank Grants of the world, which we'll get to one day, hopefully. But, uh, that's about it with Grover Cleveland Alexander. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any other questions, any other comments, again, please feel free to leave them. Uh, next is Roberto Alomar. That should be a very short video, much shorter than Hank Aaron or Grover Cleveland Alexander. So that's about it. I appreciate the time. And as always, keep collecting.